Mr. President, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, COVID-19 is threatening to wipe out the development gains of the last century, and in doing so, it is also reversing three decades of gains in poverty eradication. The MDG on poverty eradication was achieved five years ahead of schedule, but now with the corresponding SDG, we are sadly moving backwards. Livelihoods have been decimated all over the world and a whole new generation now risks living in the shadow of poverty unless we take urgent action now to dramatically increase social protection, which is why this initiative is so timely and important. In my own country, Pakistan, within 10 days of the lockdown, our government committed over a billion dollars to deliver emergency cash to 16.5 million families which given household size means reaching out to 120 million people. We drew on digital capabilities to deliver cash, combining national identity card numbers with data analytics, text messaging and biometric verification. In 10 weeks, we have helped 11 million families, which represents the most extensive and the most transparent social protection operation ever undertaken in the history of the country and in the most difficult of circumstances. We are now planning for a massive scale-up of social protection through our new multi-sectoral framework called ESAS, which means compassion in our language Urdu. Our experience with ESAS has taught us that precision matters deeply in social protection, which is why we are using 21st century tools such as data analytics, precision payments and data-driven accountability to help those in need. Mr. President, it may be too early to determine new poverty numbers, but we already know that COVID-19 has wreaked havoc with the lives of those that subsist on daily wages, those that earn peace rate, others that struggle with vending stalls in the informal economy, the tens of millions that have been laid off, and hundreds of millions of farmers who we think have subsistence living, but whose lives have been uprooted by the disruptions in local supply chains. The cost of COVID-19 is not limited to lives lost and morbidity. It is staggering in terms of hunger, children dropping out of school and foregone health care. And as always, it is the women and girls that are disproportionately bearing the brunt of this tragedy. So it is a moral imperative for the international community to prioritize poverty alleviation and social protection especially in view of a possible protracted crisis and its long-term consequences for vulnerable groups. The scale of action demanded from the world is unprecedented. Just to put things in perspective, there are 4 billion individuals without social protection in this world. The experience in Pakistan leads me to believe that it is possible to rise to the occasion. History shows us that disasters and their tragic consequences have a tendency to catalyze social change. So it may be cliched, but this crisis may well have a silver lining. We now have a one in a generation chance to build a fairer world that ends poverty, inequality, and the climate crisis. I'm hoping the Alliance can play an important part in this transformation. I'm honored to be a part of it, and I want to thank you for the invitation.